Welcome back to a family of fair faith edition. This is part two of our um, grief discussion. We tried to do it in, in, in one part, but it was just, it was so much information. And my guest had so much information and, and it wanted to help people. So we decided to do a part two and this is part two. And I'm just gonna dive right in because we're ready, all right? And one thing I wanna talk about is the, they said there's five stages of the stage, some of the stages of grief, which is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, okay? And uh, for me, I think uh, one thing that got me, I, I think uh, Sister uh, Miss Rosalind said that when she, uh, when her mom passed, she, or when she had the grief, she just kept going, just kept going. And that's what happened to me in 2019, May, Mom passed at the end of May. I had to do summer camp, mm. kids camp from seven to seven every day. I dove right into it, okay? And so I didn't have time to even process anything. And I remember someone telling me, and this goes back to, now I'm gonna tell you this, I was all of them at the same time. I, acceptance, I wasn't quite there yet, but the other four, I was like, what, but what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? You know what I'm saying? Depression was all already there from previous stuff. You know what I'm saying? And the anger, it never left, okay? And denial, I'm still in denial, okay? But one thing that I would say to me as far as um, when the phone calls were gone and when the text messages, cause they all write when it's, you know, when it's coming, when it first happens and stuff like that. But it wasn't until I was in the middle of summer camp. I might have been at the end, I don't know. And someone said, someone's here to see you. I'm in the classroom with the kids and stuff like that. And I'm saying, who's coming to see me? And they know I got summer camp. And I walk in the hallway, you all, and it's Natasha. And I didn't have to say nothing. I didn't have to nothing, okay? Just excuse me if I get emotional because God has a way of uh, seeing about you without you even knowing it, okay? I didn't have to say anything to Natasha. I just broke down crying because she's a sister to me that we go back 20 something years, okay? So she's my sister, she said, and I knew that her mom had passed, you know what I'm saying? So I know that coming to my mom's funeral would rehash some things, but she thought enough of me. She said, you know what? I didn't come then because I knew everybody would be around you, okay? She said, I came when the phone calls were gone, when the text messages had slowed down, and I looked at her and she knew I didn't have, I hadn't been grieving properly. She said, listen, grievance doesn't have a timeline. She said, it's been two years, you know, for me. And when she said that, it made it okay for me to go ahead and break down because I knew somebody understood what I was going through. If you haven't lost a parent or whatever, you can't say how you are doing because you wouldn't ask that question. Okay, that's like asking, you know, uh, you know, uh, how you doing? Are you okay? No, I'm not. And then somebody said one time, do you miss your mama? So I went on here and went on in the Sunday school, but I, in my mind, I lifted up this little lady and set her inside the garbage can and put the lid on top. Okay, because I thought that was the dumbest question that I've ever heard. But then she gets inside the class. She's an older woman. She's known me since I was young, you know what I'm saying? And says, I wanna you know, say happy birthday to my mama. So in my head, I'm like, it was playing tricks on me because you just asked me about my mama, but you wanna celebrate your mama, which is no shade, but I felt like you was out of order. You know what I'm saying? You know, that was just one of those questions. Has any of you, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna go with Larry. Uh, have you experienced one of the, one of the, um, stages of grief right? and briefly how did you deal with it um i don't think i ex definitely experienced all of them and um mm -hmm. if that so i even kind of operate with this on the seven stage but there as we know there's many stages of grief but on the five I, and i would think i didn't readily understand them at the time that i was experiencing them but i will say about the point of denial um there was it was shortly after my mother passed and i was invited to minister at a church and I was there preparing for church. And this, when I walked in, I turned around and there was this woman and I just knew it was my mother. It was like, there was no, there was no, nothing in my head that stopped that 
thought from coming in, but I had looked around, I turned around and I saw her and I, and inside I was like, <gasps> and then immediately it had to set, reset myself and I lost it right there. So, you know, that was the element of, I guess I didn't realize it, but I was in a moment of denial because yeah. how would you ever expect to see, you know, your mother mm -hmm. when she's passed? So um, right. that would be probably my experience that I would say. Right. Kendall, talk to me. Brother James, I mean, depression kind of just set in with me finally. I had been doing so much and then finally things had stopped being so busy and everything just stopped and then I was just like okay I don't want to get up out of bed I don't want to do anything you know I did the process of taking care of my mom for eight years she was on dialysis and then with my brother with his cancer his treatment and even I I, I, I did uh, acting and so I was actually in a play the major role to kill a mockingbird at the time and when they were saying something was taking turn for him, he was being septic. He actually told the nurse, don't bother him. Just let him because he's got a major role. And so then all of that just started playing back in my head. And it depressed me because I was like, he didn't want me to come, but I had to go. So I'm just telling you, depression is real. And I'm actually in mental health now. I recently moved to a position where I work with outpatient mental health with group therapy. And as we've stated earlier, it's good to talk. It's good to share with people and just let them know, you know, it's okay to let it out and to, to trust God and move forward. Most definitely. Uh, Natasha. Um, I think I spent a lot of time in denial um, I, I would classify my denial a little bit differently as avoidance. I avoided all things that had to do with my mother. Um, I still have a hard time looking at pictures. I have not yet reached that stage where I can go through things and, you know, smile and, you know, I haven't gotten there. It is still very painful. Um, I live with acceptance but my acceptance is still tempered by what, I wouldn't call it denial, but I would call it disbelief. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people all the time, I had never planned on living after my mother died. Like there was no time that existed after that. And so um, to, you know, for a long time, I still kept waiting with the Lord, like, okay, so when I'm dying, you, you, you coming now, you know, it, like literally, it was like, cause surely you don't expect me to continue living. And so um, it's been an adjustment. One of the things that I will say is whatever your support system is to use it. Um, I grew up an only child with my mother as a single um, parent, but I have been greatly blessed. I've been blessed with friends. I've been blessed with a husband and his family has been phenomenal. And so um, that has been my support system. You know, it's, it's, no one can tell you how to grieve. And I still struggle with feeling guilty for grieving um that but that's something i like i said before i have to allow myself that grace because there is no time limit there is no right or wrong um there is no should as as we think about it you know you should be this and you should be that generally speaking the people who have the concept of should have not experienced any type of um you know loss to a degree where they would understand. And so I encourage anybody who um, is experiencing grief to extend yourself grace and get rid of the shoulds. There, each person is different. You know, there is no time. It hurts some days like it did the day of. And, you know, some days are better than others. We just have to take them in the waves that they come and, you know, trust and believe that we will be victorious as we are each day that we carry this grief. Uh, Dr. Rowe. Uh, I think I um, hovered around all phases. As I said before, you know, anger was a big part of it. But see, here was my problem. I was in denial that I was angry all those years. So, you know, when you think you don't have a problem, that's when you have a problem. And so that inward anger started affecting me 
physically, mentally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And that just led out to flat out depression. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit on top of that. Mm -hmm. And that really threw me for a loop because I was at home by myself for mm -hmm. my other siblings and family. They were with someone, but it was just, you know, I thank the Lord that I have a dog, but even with having a dog, there's no communication. You know, your pet loves you unconditionally, right. but sometimes I just wanted human interaction. Mm -hmm. And I tell you the fervent prayers of the righteous do avail of much mm -hmm. because James, I'm going to tell you when you would send me those zoom links, mm -hmm. those were times and talking about chapel choir mm -hmm. meetings. And a lot of times I'd be tore up from the flow up mm -hmm. and I'd get on there and I was like, you know what? I, I can't fake the funk anymore. I'm just going to be real. And mm -hmm. it was just good to, it was like people always know when to reach out to yeah. you. And I think what frustrates me more about, you know, when you've lost someone, mm -hmm. it's when someone says, well, you should get over that. Now I want to just punch them in the face because I'm like, you got a lot of nerve. I mean, I mean, really you do. You have a lot of nerve that even making a statement like that, you know? And for me, this last year has just been a lot mm -hmm. of growth and being honest about how I felt about it and how it really affected my life. And I don't have a problem talking to people about that. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes things do occur in your life, but God just literally shut the door. I mm -hmm. mean, he shut the door and bolted it. And I'm kind of like, I kind of got a little mad about that. And I was like, wait a minute, when COVID hit, God was doing something for me. But at the time that COVID hit, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. But having gone through COVID, you mm -hmm. know, and the isolation, and sometimes all you, the only person you have to talk to is God. Because, you know, in the midnight mm -hmm. hour, sometimes folks are not up to talk to. Or I'd be calling folks' number or texting, and they were like, why are you up? Because I couldn't sleep. You mm -hmm. know, because I'd be thinking a thought or something would be going on or sometimes I'd just be bawling and crying mm -hmm. and uh, you really don't have any control over that but what I would say about all of those five stages just go through it mm -hmm. go through it and it's no shame in it no shame no shame uh Arnett you know my mother died in 1993 of ovarian cancer I was her caregiver and um Again, losing it, like, like you all have said, losing your mother. The only thing that trumped that was losing my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to show you guys, we, this year, because of COVID, my family has been, we've been reaching out to each other, having an occasional Zoom call. Mm -hmm. So this Christmas, one of my nieces, had some calendars made. Mm. That's that's my mama. Oh. And for every every month, there's a picture of like on on my on July. There's me. There's a picture of me because that's my birthday, and you know stuff like that. But this was the Mother's Day picture, and it's it's the month of May. Mm. I'm having trouble letting May go. <laughs> and yeah. it's been since 1993 yeah there is no timetable mm -hmm. there is no deadline mm -hmm. on grief right um i don't handle it the same way right because i have had some healing some healing has happened over time but to say that it's that it ever goes away mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. i'm an amputee you just don't see the part that's missing mm -hmm. but i walk around every day and there's a song mm -hmm. there's a television program 
-hmm. There's a commercial. There's a, 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 a comment Geneva might make that I call her Lala. Lala would have made because right. she is she is only two years younger than Angela was when she died. Angela died when she was 27. Mm -hmm. And Geneva is now 25. Mm -hmm. uh, both of us are looking at each other kind of crazy because we're coming up on her 27th year. And she's like, how are you going to handle that, mama? And I told her, baby, we're going to make it through it, just like we've made it through every day since Lala's been gone. And I would say this also, one thing that um, is getting me through or whatever, I, I won't get over it. I will definitely never get over it. And for those who say, you know, get over it, you'll get over it. You don't get over it. You know, I had to come to the conclusion that I asked some friends. I was so angry. They was like, well, my mom passed without my, was not. And I was like, oh, I had my mom 44 years. I had her, God gave her to me for 44 years. Does it hurt or whatever? Yes, all the first hurt. Mother, the first Mother's Day, you, you made an anniversary out of the day that she passed, the day that she, the funeral was, uh, you know, her birthday. You got about eight or nine, ten first that you're going to go through. And it seems like the first come every year. All the first, they just do a repeat. You know what I'm saying? And, but one thing that I've, I, we, that has joined uh, us or whatever on this call. Either we're in music or we're in the arts or something like that. And I found, and Tasha, I, I'm not going to tell you business. Tasha's one of the, the best uh, writers, uh, music, you know what I'm saying? Larry is one of the best dancers. We all was in the choir and uh, uh, show choir. Yes, I was in show choir, Larry. Thank you. And we, we were all in there together. And of course, Arnett and Kendall and, and of course, Rosalind and with music. Yo, you all, sometimes it, it, it gives me a way of escape, okay? But I will tell you this one thing. My mother started writing a book. She started writing a book, okay? And she wanted to put all her poems in a book. I didn't think nothing of it. I said, Mom, just get the stuff together. Well, she wrote all, she wrote about 56, 60 poems or whatever. And I just jumped up one day when was like, I'm going to complete my mama's book. It was only natural. And it wasn't until then that I truly felt like I was on the grieving process. Because like, I don't think, I think it was you, Tasha, you said that you, you could look at no pictures, you couldn't look at nothing. And that, that was me. I would look at the picture and try to smile. And they say, oh, you got your mama's smile. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, God has allowed me in this time, even, even like uh, Sister Rose said, the quarantine time, this corona time, God shut some things down. You know what I'm saying? And allow me to just help finish our book, which will be out two months. But I thank God for that. And Natasha, I'm speaking this into your life. If you all knew Natasha's mama's testimony, you all, I'm not going to tell the story. It'll be another time. But Tasha is, uh, she is great at what she do. Me and Tasha and Larry, we used to ride together and do our plays and shows. And we did the wigs, we played the costume, we, you know, the whole nine. I was a lion, he was a tin man, and she was the seamstress. Uh, Ursuline, not Ursuline, who was her name? Eveline, and everything else. You know, we made it happen, you know what I'm saying? But it, it took all, it was a village. It was a village. And though we don't talk all the time, you best believe if something pops off, everything stops and we're there. And so each and one of you, I see that, you know, that's why you're on this call. You know, that's why you're on this discussion because God puts people in your life that you don't even know about that will, is going to help you, okay? When I first met Arnett, I didn't know her daughter had passed like that. You know what I'm saying? And and I act like I know her daughter, but I've never met her daughter in, her, in my life. You know what I'm saying? So it definitely takes a village. And and uh, Kendall, who is a part of your village, briefly, that kind of helps you uh, cope? Actually, now it's it's just like, I have a, 
my my grandfather named his only two daughters both Patsy. So I go to my aunt all the time. She's my support. I I go by just when I just want to just get something that my mother would cook. They cook because they were like twins. They were less than uh, 16 months apart. They dressed alike until they were dead. So now it's just like, I just go to her as well as some of my close friends, you know, just, they helped me just a couple of my preacher friends. I just, I open up to them because I was always afraid to open up to anybody because I was thinking they'll see me breaking. But now I, my, my cousin, I can call him at any time and say, hey, I just need to hear somebody talk, you know, and, and James, there's been times I've been able to go to you and just say, hey, you know, so yes, I mean, it's, it's the support of the village of my church family, uh, just my family in itself, my friends, and especially my coworkers have been a blessing to me, because I'll tell you, my boss from the funeral home, we, the day my brother, the week my brother died, we did like six funerals. And he kept would just call me and say, are you okay? Can you keep doing this? Are you all right? If you need a break, I'll, I'll but I just kept going. And I mean, they all became my support group. And Dr. Rover, who's supporting your, your, uh, your village? Oh, well, definitely Chapel Choir has been part of my visit. I know I've been missing in action a you little bit. I lost, I lost the Zoom link. I didn't know you all were still going on, but uh, family and friends. You know, you, I, I found out that going through this, you know who your ride or die people are. Cause yeah. some folks would give up on you. You know, it's like when they see that you are not the same that how they think that you should be, people go missing in action. But those that, you know, call you, check on you just to see how you're doing. And sometimes it's not the same people. You know, it's just amazing who God to put in your life right at that moment when you need it. Because Mother's Day is always tough for me. And I know, you know, I reached out to you and you sent a shout out to me, James, because we just know. Right, right. Yeah. I'm going to say this, uh, and then I'm going to throw it to Larry. Uh, I, I say when you're dealing with people that have been through a loss, gauge their, their energy, okay? Because I was smiling on Mother's Day because I said, you know what? I'm going to wake up smiling. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to smile all day long. You all, I made it till I got home. And then somebody going to say, I'm just checking on you because I know it's hard. I'm, I, I was like, I've been smiling all day long. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be happy today. Okay, I said, no, no, let me smile for once, you know what I'm saying, because I do know God gets the glory, this is the day the Lord has made, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. however, don't come to the King James Version all the time neither, okay, because I'm real, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to hear all the scriptures and stuff like that, they're needed, don't get me wrong, because I believe mm -hmm. in truth, the therapist, don't get me wrong, okay, but sometimes, just say hi, okay, uh, Brother Larry. But real quick, of course, my family um, definitely, um, um, I would say specifically my brother Alonzo, definitely part of my group, uh, my village, my best friend, of course, Kiana, as you all know, has been there. Um, James Stowe was actually there with me when my mother passed. Um, he lost his mother several years prior to me. So um, that, um, but I will say that also um, Friend Tacoma, we talk about music and how that brought us. She took me to brought, took me to New York to see The Color Purple the year my mom passed and that has shifted my life. But I will also say this, uh, Ms. Rosalyn, um, my dog, Peace. God gives you, you never know where God's going to speak to you from and with him. My dog's name is Peace. I'll never forget. I was having my moment, one of my moments mourning my mother. I didn't say anything. I couldn't communicate to him. But what he did showed me that he was listening to God was as well. He was in tune with me. I was laying on the couch. I'm making fast. I was laying on the couch. I was feeling down. Peace brought his toy over to me, laid it on me, walked away and sat back and looked at me. Now, whenever he brings his toy, he wants to play with it. But he brought his toy to come for me because he knew what I was feeling. And that moment was like, that was where God was letting me know I'm gonna use all that I've given you and created for you to help you through this moment. So my dog definitely is part of my village. That's why I love him so much. I hate to even stop, but I will say this. We all have a village. You have your pets and Leroy and Binky and Tinky and Pete. And you know, everybody's a dog lover except me, okay? But I wanna thank 
thank you all for being a part of this um, this discussion. And please, 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 we will do a check-in series as suggested by one of my um, hosts on today. We will definitely do that. And thank you all for joining our Family Affair Faith Edition. We love you, and we will we will have a message at the end of this that if you need help with grieving, okay? So peace out, and God loves everybody, okay? Love y'all.